This lesson is uh, on section 10.4, empirical and molecular formulas. We're going to explain what, um, what those two things mean, and we're going to start with uh, percent composition, what we mean by that. Determine these empirical molecular formulas of compounds from the uh, mass percent and actual mass data. Uh, the percent by mass is the ratio of the mass of each element to the total mass of the compound as a percent. So we're going to go over that. Percent composition, the empirical formula, all that. The main idea is here is the molecular formula of a compound is the whole number multiple of its empirical formula. So we'll explain what that means more in a minute. Okay, so to find the percent composition of some formula of some compound, right? A compound is made up of different atoms in different ratios. So this is the little formula for the percent by mass is the mass of the element divided by the mass of the compound times 100, right? That's just the basic percent formula. Okay, so to figure out the percent composition in elements, we have to use the, the, the total mass of the compound is its molar mass. Okay, so we're using the molar mass as the total weight, and then the mass of each element. It's the the how much the the moles of one of the elements weighs as the total of the whole compound. For when we'll do some examples to show what I mean by that. The empirical formula of a compound is the smallest whole number ratio of moles of the element. So a lot of times you get um, a, an empirical formula from, assuming you have 100 grams in the compound. So you have all the percentages, and we say, okay, well, it weighs 100 grams, and then we figure out how many moles each one of those elements is. And then we divide by the smallest number of moles that we come up with, and we get a ratio of the moles to moles to moles. Okay, so this doesn't make too much sense when we're doing this slides, but we'll go over some examples after the end here. So the molecular formula for hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. Okay, so the empirical formula, though, is just OH, right? It's just the hydrogen-oxygen ratios, the mole ratios there are one to one. So that's why it's OH. The molecular formula specifies actual number of atoms of each element in one molecule or formula unit of the substance. So it's always whole number ratios of the empirical formula. So the empirical formula in that last one was OH, but the actual molecular formula was H2O2, right? So that's the difference between those two. The empirical formula sometimes, especially in hydrocarbons, is lower than the actual molecular formula. Okay, so I print this out and I'll hand this out to you guys. This is how uh, a little flow chart of how to figure out the different things here. And I'm not going to go over this right now. We'll go over that in class a little more. Um, the checkpoint, what's the empirical formula for this compound? Okay, so you see in this compound they've got everything is multiple of 6. So if we divide the carbon by 6, the 12 by 6, the O by 6, we get a 1 to 1 ratio, which would be, and that's the empirical formula, and that's going to be answer C. So that's the empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of those elements that are in the compound. So in that case, it's 1 to 2 to 1. Which is the empirical formula for hydrogen peroxide. So well, they had that in the, the slide just a minute ago. So H2O2 on A that's what hydrogen peroxide is. That's the actual molecular formula for it. But the empirical formula is just going to be OH. 1H and 1O is the 1 to 1 ratio for that. So now we're going to do some examples of what we're talking about. Find the percent composition of H2O. Okay, so the first thing, the first thing we have to do is find the molar mass. Okay. So the molar mass of H2O is, we have two H's, two H's, they each weigh one, 
plus an O, which is 16, so the molar mass is 18 grams, okay? So out of that's going to be what our total is for our, we have one, if we have one mole of, of H2O, it's going to weigh 18 grams, okay? So to find the percent of hydrogen, the percent of H equals, well, how much does the H weigh? Right. Well, from, from we're doing figuring out the molecular mass, we know the H is this and the O is here. So we're going to put the H number, which is 2 times 1, 2 over 18. And the percent of oxygen is going to equal 16 over 18. Okay, so we just take our handy dandy calculator, work out those numbers. So 2 divided by 18 um, times 100 is about 11.1% hydrogen. Okay, so even though we have twice as much hydrogen as oxygen, it's so light that by percent by weight, it doesn't make up very much of it. And you know, almost 90%. And you can, with two elements, right, you can subtract the total from 90, or you can just do 16 divided by 18, and we get 88.9% of, the rest of it is oxygen, okay? So that's the percent composition of water. There's just two elements there. It's 11, about 11% 11 hydrogen and about 89% oxygen, even though there's twice as much hydrogen as oxygen because of the hydrogen doesn't hardly weigh anything. Okay, so we'll try another one with CO2. Okay, so carbon is, so the mole, find the molar mass, right? So the molar mass of CO2 is, we have 12 for the carbon, and then we have 2 times, let's be times 16. So 12 for this is 12 plus 32 equals 44 grams. That's the mass of one mole of carbon dioxide. So to find the percent, to find the percent of carbon, we take how much part of it was carbon, and you know 12 was carbon, and 32 was oxygen. Okay, so we just had two elements here. So we take how much of our mass came from carbon? 12, what was our total? 44, the percent of oxygen, and we had two oxygens with 32 out of 44. So for the carbon, it's going to equal 12 divided by 44. It's going to be about 27.8. 3% carbon, and for the oxygen, 32 divided by 44 is going to be, well, you can just subtract that from 100 also, right? When there's just two elements, if you're sure you got the first one right, you can just subtract that percent from 100 because the two of them have to add up to 100%. Okay, but just went ahead and did the calculations to check. Did it add up to 100? Yes. Okay, that should be correct. Okay, so we're going to do a little um, one with three elements in it one more time here. So the first thing we have to do is find the molar mass. I'm just going to abbreviate it MM. Molar mass of this one, we have hydrogen. We have um, two hydrogens times one plus the sulfur. I forgot what sulfur was. Sulfur is... chart here. Sulfur is about 32. We'll just leave it at 32. And we have plus four oxygens times 16. Okay, so our H's are 2, um, 32, and 4 times 16 is 64. 64. So this is our H, S, and O. So added together, all three of these added together, 
equals 98. So the total of the molar mass is 98 grams. Okay, so to figure out each one individually, we do the hydrogen first. Hydrogen percent equals 2 over 98. The um, sulfur percent equals 32 over 98. And the oxygen is 64 over 98. So we can tell right away that most of the percent is going to be in oxygen. Okay, so for the hydrogen, 2 divided by 98 is, comes out to be about, um, well, we'll just say it's about 2%. 32 divided by 98 is 32 point, we call that 7%, and 64 divided by 98 is 65.3%. Okay, so for a check on this, does these add up to 100? 65.3 plus 32.7 plus 2. Okay, so they add up to 100. So that's our check that we pretty much did everything right. Okay, so the empirical formula, when we have we want to find the empirical formula and we have, we know the percents and we want to find the empirical formula. So how do we do that? How do we do these problems? Well, the first thing you have to do is take the percents and pretend that there's like 100 um, grams of that substance. So we would have 65.5 uh, grams of carbon. We would have 5.5 grams of hydrogen, and we'd have 29.0 grams of oxygen. Okay, so now we have to figure out how many moles that is of each element. Okay, so the molar mass of carbon is 12, so we do 65.5 divided by 12. 65.5 divided by 12, and we get about 5. 0.46 and well hydrogen is just one so 5.5 divided by one is going to give me about 5.5 moles 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 okay so by moles hydrogen and carbon are the same so we know we're going to have the same molar ratio of carbon and, and hydrogen now let's check out what oxygen does, we have 29, and its molar mass is 16, so 29 divided by 16 gives us 1.1, I mean 1.8125. Okay, so these are the moles we have here. Okay, so this is the moles of uh, oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. Okay, so how do we get a molar ratio on these? Well, if you divide everything by the small, by whatever the smallest number of moles is here, if we divide everything by 1.8125, we get a 1 for the ratio of oxygen. Okay, so when we do the other ones, the um, 5.5 divided by that, we get, we get about 3. Okay, so if this is a just about equal to 3, this is a just about equal to 3. Now, these molar ratios are not going to come out exactly right. So what I did was I divided 5.5 five, um, 5 divided by 1.8125, and I got this. And I know I get about the same for carbon. So my ratio of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen is 3 to 1, 3, 3 to 1. So the empirical formula is going to be C3H3 with an O with it. Okay, so that's the empirical formula. Okay, so good enough. So that was the empirical formula. So what if the this compound, if that empirical formula we just had, the C3 
H3O, its actual had a molar mass of 110. Okay, so how is this the actual formula for it, or is it a multiple, or is it or is the actual formula some multiple of that? So we need to figure out the molar mass of this compound here that we got from the last one. So the molar mass here is going to equal uh, 12 times 3 plus 3, because a hydrogen is just one each, right? There's three of them, plus 16. Okay, so that's going to be 36 plus 19 equals 55. Okay, so that's the molar mass of this one. So 55, so 110, so we take whatever our actual molar mass is. So 110 divided by 55 is going to give me 2. So that means that our actual ratio, the actual molecular ratio, is twice as much. So this 2 means it weighed twice as much as its empirical formula. So its actual molecular formula would have been C6H6O2. Okay, so that's the actual compound out as it exists in nature would have had that formula for it. Okay, so... Um, Look at the worksheet um, down below, answer the form, and I'll see you guys in class.